<laughs> it's okay. I barely had time to taste my omelette. Is that a patrol? Hacks, yeah. That my militia buddies found me. Well, I'm off. Everyone's on the run. The disciplinarians remind me that I don't belong here. That's enough. I'm in a place where no cameras go. They are prisoners. Assassins, bank robbers and drug traffickers. Here, the hacks stay out and the criminals rule. I'm in Bolivia. In Palmasola prison. This is a prison within a prison. A dungeon where those who don't respect the rules are forcibly confined. Would you like some water? Yeah, we don't have any water. I'll bring you back five liters, is it okay? Awesome. Looking for water? Follow me. There's fresh water. Come, it's over here. The water is in the bags. Don't you have some booze? You can also bring back a kilo of air for everyone. <laughs> It's just a bunch of guys making a fuss. Look, him with the scars is the most dangerous. Hello to all the bad boys watching us. How long have you been here? For three months. And what are those tattoos on your face? This is my daughter and my wife. They died in an accident. Dead. To talk to Bolivia's most dangerous criminals, I had to spend five days immersed in Palmasola. Palmasola is one of the most overcrowded prisons in South America, Bolivia's largest. This is where the country's most dangerous criminals are locked up. In 2013, clashes between two gangs left 35 people dead and 70 injured. The latest winter incident to date, a prisoner killed his wife and buried her in his cell. The body was not found until six months later. After months of negotiations, I enter Palmasola. The cap, please. I'm going to spend five days in this unusual prison where cameras are not welcome. Do you have a phone? Yes, I have a phone. Good. Please wait. Phones are forbidden here. This way is straight ahead. Okay. Thanks a lot. Palmasola. 5,000 inmates in an 800-place prison, a prison archipelago. There are seven blocks within the compound, women, dirty cops, tuberculosis patients, high security area, semi-closed area, and PC4. 
Hello. Which block are you going to? PC4. PC4 is a city in the heart of the prison. 2,800 and not a single guard. Here, the state has resigned and the prisoners have decided to manage themselves. During my stay, I'm going to be on my own. 34 murders on the counter. Inex has two hammer blows to the head. Mateo a former hitman for the Colombian cartels and Lokoto a survivor of the 2013 riots. I've got less than a week to get accepted by these big shots. To stay in PC4, I had to ask permission from the prison governor, to a police colonel, but also to the prisoner's representatives, Leonidas. Inside PC4, he's the boss. Here, the guards only manage entrances and exits. Gail is the one with the big camera. I'm Sebastian Perez. What happens inside is not their problem, as long as there's no riot. Go ahead. That's it, I'm in. First objective, meet the most powerful prisoner on the block. Thank you very much. Without his agreement, I would never have been able to set foot here. Leonidas? Pleasure, Sebastian. Let me introduce Leonidas, who got 30 years for murder. Do we go this way or that way? Okay, this way. Leonidas is the big boss among prisoners. He's been here 18 years. In 2006, he led a revolt against the gang leaders who ruled Palmasola. There were gangs who stole from the inmates and rounded them up. Yeah, it was all about subduing them. Exactly. With guns. There was racketeering, murders, threats, a lot of abuse. They even took their wives. Did they rape them? Yes. Then one day we got fed up with it all. On May 17, 2006, we made a revolution. We were tired of putting up with it. So we got organized and cleaned up. We got rid of everyone we didn't want anymore. They were moved to another part of the prison. But you need the help of the authorities to do that. Of course, we had planned everything with them. So you went to talk to the administration. Above all, we talked to the people who were suffering all this. Okay. So we got organized. We've set up teams to deal with security and eliminate all these disciplinary problems once and for all. The gang leaders who terrorized the prison were all locked up in PC7 and PC3, two high security wards. But 10 years after Leonidas took power, PC4 remains a powder keg. Grudges are always present, and rival gangs are always on the alert. Violence can explode at any moment. To maintain order, Leonidas created a militia, the Disciplina. 250 red and blue vests patrolling the prison's alleys and dormitories day and night. Even me, they won't let go. My men will always be right behind you, just in case. You'll see my men everywhere. Yes, all right. But who's coming with us? That's a nice guy, Leonidas. He really cares about my safety. I'll understand later that he actually wants to keep an eye on me. Come this way, come on. Shall we go for a walk? Yeah, we'll patrol. First her with a special and numerous escort. No doubt about it, I'm safe. But if I wanted to go unnoticed, I failed. If 
there are problems in the pavilions, we have the solution. Their solution is a wooden bat made in Palmasola. The only weapon authorized in PC4. What's it for? This is to assert our presence inside the prison. We give one to each member of the group. Let me see. Oh yeah, that can hurt. We slap it on the floor to get noticed. So that people know you're there. It has a psychological effect. We work, we work. <laughs> to become a disciplinat, you must demonstrate good conduct for one year. And above all, to be in Leonidas' good books. Officially, this organization works. In 10 years, this self-managed block has become a peaceful little village, with its houses, restaurants, and even gambling halls. It sounds really cool like that, except that even in heaven, there's a solitary confinement. What's this? It's a hole for those who do anything, those who steal. That's the punishment we give them. But it's a prison within a prison. And you, come here. Here, you, come here. How are things? Fine, and you? How long have you been here? Two or three days. What did he do? He stole money from another prisoner. <laughs> 10 or 20 pesos. It's not much, but here, it's a lot of money. Hi, how are you? Sebastian. I'm also being punished here for the time being. Wait, tell me what you did. Nothing, I'm just a suspect. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we give them a chance, but there's nothing we can do. We can't control them, so we put them in there. We remove the rotten apple. It's like hearing a prison guard. And yet, it's a prisoner talking about another prisoner. It's 6 p.m. For me, the first day is over. I'm not allowed to spend the night in the prison. Leonidas claims he can't guarantee my safety unless he has something to hide from me. At the exit, in exchange for a small coin, visitors have all traces of their visit to Palmasola erased. When you have a loved one locked up in this prison, it's better if no one knows. The next day, like all visitors, I wait with my authorization in hand. In line, a prisoner's father tells me something interesting. I'm here to pay my son's rent. Are you here to pay monthly rent for your son? Yes. Where's the rent going? Nobody knows that. <laughs> no one knows where all this money is going. When a prisoner enters PC4, he has to pay up to $200 in rent. If I don't pay, they'll send my son to PC3. To be admitted to PC4, Palmasolar's most livable block, you have to pay. And Leonidas didn't brag about it. Today, he prepared my program, an official visit to understand how his prison works. Here, our organization is very strict. Not just to prove to the outside world that we're responsible people. What we want is to move forward. Making life easier for prisoners, improving their daily lives. And one of his priorities is to put as many people as possible to work. There are 15 carpentry workshops and three scrap metal workshops, employing 600 inmates. Just to earn a few Boliviano, but also to get out faster. Under Bolivian law, two days work entitles you to one day's remission.
For mobiles are required. The most common job is mobile. Shuttles between prison and the outside world. An umbilical cord made of hundreds of wheelbarrows, with which you can find everything at PC4. Mobiles are charged at one Boliviano per ride. The more trips they make, the more they earn. For that, you need to be very quick and on the lookout. I am. Winning the competition? Yes, whoever gets there first earns money. Look, it's my customer's wheelbarrow. Mobiles are what keep the prison running. Cement, sand, wood and food all arrive in wheelbarrows. The Bolivian state is bankrupt, so here, the prisoners expect nothing more. They use their own money to build their own homes. And they're proud to show me their university, their library, and especially their very last gem. Well, let's go and see how the hospital works. Hello, doctor. Dr. Borden. Hello. You're a prisoner. And why are you a doctor here? I specialize in traumatology. Okay. Okay. And what happened? Well, I made a mistake. You too? Okay. Yes, me too. I'm following you again. All the doctors are inmates. Patients do not pay for treatment. Just their medicine. We have several types of patients. Excuse me, gentlemen. He's our oldest patient. He's been bedridden for four months. We couldn't find the money for him to have the operation. What's wrong with him? A fracture of the seventh lumbar vertebra. And upstairs you're paralyzed? No, upstairs everything works. Are you on medication? Yes, I have stuff like that. Did you fall? They threw me out. They crushed him like that. They took me by the shoulders. They threw me into the void. You got attacked. Yes, they assaulted him. Disciplinats don't see everything. And I'll never see the real Palmasola with them around. Because despite its small town appearance, we mustn't forget that it's a prison. With its codes, its secrets, and its latent violence. I've been here for two days and every time I want to enter a dormitory, the disciplinarians stop me. When my bodyguards give me a break, I start to make new acquaintances. And finally, I'm going to find the way out. I have a second camera that fits in my hand. This is Gail, my cameraman. Over there, pretend you're filming. There's a guy I'm going to see. There, as if you were coming home. We'll split up to divert the attention of the disciplinarians. I met Claude, a French-speaking Cameroonian. He's been in Palmasola for six months because of an import-export business that went wrong. No, it's Pavilion 10. Okay, hop. The Quadaleros are the Pavilion service men. First thing, tell him where you're going. Who you want to see? He goes over there, calls the person. I'm going to visit Pavilion 10. Can I pass? <laughs> Thanks to Claude, I finally enter a dormitory. A pavilion as they call them here. There are 31 in PC4. Him, we call him the big one. <laughs> Nicknames are based on physical appearance. What's your name? Me? The black. Yes, that's it. <laughs> this is the corridor, the fields. Everywhere here is where people sleep. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the process of redoing the ceiling. 
He's also a prisoner. He has a specialty, helping the pavilion do the work. We don't pay him, he makes his contribution. We have at least, more or less 100 people here. A hundred? Yes, who live here. Not everyone has a room. There are people here who don't have a room. How do they do it if they don't have a room? They live and sleep in the hallway. What about those who arrive with no money at all? If they don't have money, they're like lodge workers, because whoever's working doesn't have the money to pay, so he has to work for the pavilion, and then... The one who's doing the ceiling. So these are the houses. So there are those who sleep on the floor. There are those who have the right to a dormitory and those, like Pedro, in whose house I am, who have our own apartment. You're here, aren't you? <laughs> Television fridge. It's a rich man's house. <laughs> and that's what Leonidas didn't want me to see. Like hundreds of prisoners, Pedro lives here with his family and in the eyes of the prison administration, the real one. It's totally illegal and above all dangerous. Women and children in the midst of murderers and rapists. For those who can't afford to live with their families in prison, visitors are allowed three times a week. And for singles, there are other solutions. Here, if there are no women, we get more stressed. <laughs> Before we set off again, Claude's friends are determined to give me a taste of the local stimulant. Bolivian Coke, it's the hard-working guys who take a Coke is for the brave. Mm. You have to chew it, and it will wake you up? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> It's so bitter, I can't feel my left cheek. It's anesthetic. Yes, I've tried chewing, but it just doesn't work for me. I don't need to be awake 24 hours a day. You like to sleep? Of course, I need to sleep. It's been an hour since I escaped the vigilance of the disciplinarians. Jay, continue my visit underground. Hey, Brazilian! How long are you staying here? For five days. His name is Guillermo and he's Brazilian. He went down for robbery. Does your family come to see you? No, they live too far away. And do you have children? Yes, a boy, 10 years old. And how much did you take? Six years. And how long have you been here? I've already done four and a half. But will you be coming out soon? I'll be out in a month. My sentence has been commuted. Guillermo discreetly takes me to where he sleeps. Before joining PC4, he passed through PC3 an ultra-violent section of the prison. There, foreigners are entitled to a rather special welcome committee. How did you lose your eye? At PC3. I'm a foreigner. I'm worth nothing to them. They did it out of spite. They sent me a bolt with a slingshot. And the bolt, did it hit there? Yes, and the eye came out. With this eye, I looked at the other. I bled a lot, and they looked at me and laughed. I was with a friend of mine, and he was hit by a bullet here. They broke his jaw, and I broke my eye. And they gave you the eye? They put it back in place with medical treatment. I'd like to buy a glass eye, but it's expensive. During our conversation, a disciplinarian tracked me down. Leonidas wants to see me. I don't know if that's a good sign. Gail, my cameraman, joined me. Together, we're going to find out what the inmate who rules the prison wants from us. He's waiting for me for the soccer game. I won't have a problem, even though I escaped his surveillance for two hours. Yeah. <laughs>
Is there a second half? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's 6 p.m. Like the day before, I have to go out. I'm still not allowed to sleep inside. On the way out, I pass prisoners' wives returning from their day's work outside. They're coming home, so to speak. The prison has become their home. Day three, the day before I managed to evade Leonidas' surveillance. So as soon as I walk in, I'm taken care of. It would appear that instructions have been given. I was given permission to film the canteen. Shortly before noon, each pavilion has to take its cooking pot to the kitchens outside PC4. Behind the stoves, male and female tollards prepare rancho, boiled meat, rice and vegetables. 5,000 meals leave here every day. We're approaching 50 degrees, and the gas cylinders have to be constantly cooled, otherwise everything blows up. At 1 p.m., the kettles are full again. Brothers, I bless this meal and thank those who prepared it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rancho is the one-stop menu for those who don't have a lot of money. For the privileged, there are restaurants. This lunchtime, a protege of Leonidas invites me to lunch. His name is Enix Dorado. A very nice guy. Two years ago, with a friend, he killed a student and his mother with a hammer. A sordid affair that made headlines. Today, Enix is a discreet but powerful prisoner. He's one of the sons of the Dorado clan, a wealthy family of drug traffickers. Ah, meat and chicken. Can you tell me what happened? I had a girlfriend and she was pregnant with our child. A fellow student got too close to her and tried to break up our relationship. He showed her photos of me with someone else, and so my girlfriend dumped me. I didn't understand until I looked it up on Facebook. Your fiancé left you, but she was expecting a child? She had an abortion, yes. And you went crazy? Yes. I called all my family for help, but it was 4 a.m. I decided to go to Brazil. I rented a small plane and broke down in Brazil. But my accomplice had stayed behind in Bolivia, so I had to come back to try and convince him to come with me, and that's when they stopped us. 
Enix got 30 years, but at least he was put on trial. Because in Palmasola, in 8 cases out of 10, prisoners await trial for months or even years. And it gets even crazier. Leonidas wants me to meet a prisoner who shouldn't even be here. Where do we go from here? Now we're going to see a prisoner who should have been free a long time ago. But given the way justice works in this country, he's still incarcerated here in Palmasola. He's already served his sentence, but he's still here. That's not fair. Good morning, carpenters. In the local vernacular, Rosita is a drill, a rapist. And rapists in prison, we don't like that. When he arrived here, he was disguised as a woman, raped and exhibited on the soccer field. He spent half his life in Palmasola. Follow me. <laughs> to sleep, I put this thing here. Your mattress is full of dust. Yes, just give it a little shake. You've been sleeping on this mattress for 17 years. It's so humid that you have to cover up, otherwise your bones ache the next day. Do you have arthritis? Yes, there are lagoons right there and it's cold. I can't wait until you're a real bed. Tell me about it. <laughs> Rosita was sentenced to 15 years. He should have been released two years ago. But since his rape, he's been traumatized and shuns the walls. He never dared to ask for help with his case. Leonidas has just discovered this story. He put Andres, another inmate studying law, on the case. After seven and a half years in prison, halfway through his sentence, he could have applied for parole and get out. But with no money, he couldn't afford a lawyer and public defenders can't take care of everyone. Where's your family? My family left for Argentina. Did they leave to find work? So they can't visit you or help you? Yes, I don't have any money. Yeah. Those with money only do half their work, and the poor, they stay. We know that with money, you can buy anything. Witnesses, alibis. In other words, those who don't have money or a stable economic situation can't afford to pay the fees or the windfalls of our judicial system, and the result is cases like these. How long have you been here? For three years and three months. What offense? I'm here on a first-degree murder charge. Okay. To hire a lawyer, my family had to go into debt. They sold their belongings and mortgaged the house. The lawyer took all that money and ran off with it. When the trial was over, I took the maximum penalty. So since I've been in prison, I've been studying law. Lawyers are the only profession that can help us. It's a win-win situation. Get trained so you don't get ripped off. Oh yes, I didn't tell you. Andres is Henex Dorado's accomplice. Together, they killed two people with a hammer. He too has aged 30 years. Thanks to his law studies, he cut his sentence and that of Enix in half. Today, it's impossible to escape the surveillance of the Red Vests. And it looks like the big boss has put the pressure on them not to let me out of their sight. I'm being followed, I can't get away. Impossible to try and find out the little secrets of this prison without the guys behind me. How are things? Yeah, well, a party. Ah, uh, the show. Leonidas sent for me. He insists that I attend the prisoner's show. A way of passing the time while pleasing the officials, the prison governor and his wife, the police colonel and himself.
he doesn't look happy. From now on, he's going to close all my doors. So I'm going to try one last shot. During the show, Guillermo discreetly came up to me to say that the guys in his pavilion would like to have a chat with me. If I want to give the disciplinarians the slip, now's the time. I'm going to spend some quiet time with prisoners who aren't in administration. Here, disciplinarians are not in charge. Nelson is a friend of Guillermo's. First observation, well, the vast majority of prisoners have clear-sighted opinions on many things. There are no reintegration programs here. The government gives you nothing. Look, see what they're doing? You see how they work to support themselves, to show society that they're changing, that they're learning. And what is the government doing? Today, we're proving that we're better people. Socially, mentally, we work, we get ahead. But everyone sees us as the scum of the earth. We're trying to show that with this internal organization, we're really improving. But what are they saying outside? No, impossible. Prisoners aren't allowed to live properly. Let's stop. <laughs> This is a Colombian-style hammock. Mateo worked for the Colombian cartels. Ah, have you ever been to Colombia? Colombia's not bad. Were you a hit man? He tried to extort almost 150,000 euros from a wealthy Bolivian family. Today, he's broke. He weaves hammocks and sells them to other prisoners and visitors to PC4. And you started in Cali? Yes, in Cali, Colombia. I started when I was 10. I was a street kid. I was a thief until I was introduced to a cucho, a chef. And I started working for him. He taught me the basics. How to use a gun, how to shoot. At what age did you start killing people? At 12. And your bosses sent you to Bolivia to work? They sheltered me here a few years ago. I was younger. I had a problem in Colombia, so they sent me to work in Bolivia. But it's a pretty tattoo. It's the only good thing I ever did. It's my daughter, Madai. I did it when I was free. When you live off delinquency and drug trafficking, the day you fall, the day things stop going well, you lose everything. You lose your wife, your children, your friends, you lose all your supporters. If you spend too much time in prison, when you get out, there's no one left. Before leaving the group, I ran into their master. He's Dutch. How are you? All good. First, he crushed my hands. Then the ribs. You hurt me like hell. <laughs> look, look at that, that's the ambulance. Nelson understood that I wanted to see the Rio Palmasola, not the official version imposed on me from the start. He advises me to take a walk around the bend. That's the name he gives to the most infamous street in PC4, the one furthest from the entrance. The place for scum and drugs. Strong alcohol, marijuana, crystal meth, or cocaine. Everything forbidden in Palmasola can be bought here. For me, nothing like that. But they'll invite me to share their meal. It's corn flour with eggs. We eat this while we wait for the rancho, otherwise we'll faint. It's okay. I barely had time to taste my omelette. Is that a patrol? Hacks, yeah. That my militia buddies found me. Well, I'm off. Everyone's on the run. The disciplinarians remind me that I don't belong here. Uh, 
le gusta el bolo. That's enough. Está bueno ya. It's 6 p.m. and as usual I have to go out. But tonight, Leonidas has given me permission to come back at 11 p.m. I'll have two hours to talk to the prisoners before they go to bed. Good evening, my name is Sebastian, and I have permission to enter PC4 between 11 a.m. and 1 a.m. Go ahead, pass. For days I've been waiting for permission to spend the night in Palmasola. The director and the colonel agreed, but Leonidas did not. And he's the one who lays down the law inside. He gave me two hours. Good evening, everyone. I have the authorization. How are things? As soon as I step through the gates of PC4, I feel like I'm entering a dead city. The only sign of life was Leonidas' militia. What's going on there? People have gone back to their homes, to their cottages? Exactly. Everything's quiet. But I was told that the prisoners went to bed at midnight. No, not tonight. In fact, the owner closed up store before I arrived. <laughs> They're to be surrounded. I'm surrounded. And you're all on call tonight? Yes, we're all disciplinarians. We make the night rounds. <laughs> I know there's a nightlife in Palmasola with all the excesses that entails. But Leonidas doesn't want me to film that. So he made all the prisoners go to bed before I arrived. After half an hour, I understood the message. The next morning, life returns to Palmasola. It's my last day and I have an appointment with one of the survivors of the 2013 riots. Two rival gangs clashed for control of part of the prison. PC3. Some inmates exploded gas canisters and started a huge fire. 31 people died and many were badly burned. Lokoto is a survivor, almost a miracle worker. What's that over there? Over there is PC3, a closed area. The blue building is Block B, maximum pressure. We were asleep and at 5 a.m. we heard stones being thrown at the roof. And when we went out to have a look, they were already inside. They had crossed the fence. Well, grillage? A fence divides the block between the two buildings. There were 60 of them and 30 of us, so we decided to take them on. Did they come in to fight? No, they've come to kill. With guns? They had machetes, wooden and steel truncheons. They managed to kill 10 people with machetes and clubs. A cousin of mine died. I went up to escape and try to find those who were able to fight. Many people hide when they see death coming. We decided to confront them to prevent them from continuing to rise, because if they did, we'd all be dead. 
In the middle of the battle, there's an explosion. We were at the top and everything started to burn. Then a second explosion sent the roof flying. It took over four hours for a hundred police officers to restore order. Of the 30 people with Lokoto, nine survived. These are scars, burns left by the windowsill. I also received a machete blow to the head, the most serious injury. A blow from a machete. 13 stitches. That's when they stuck an iron bar in me, here and here. After listening to Lokoto's story, all I can think of is what I want. Take a look at this famous PC-3. The boulder is reputed to be very violent, but I want to see what it's like. My PC-4 buddy's over there. Good morning, gentlemen. 120 inmates are locked behind these fences. All penalties combined. PC-3 is the antechamber to PC-4. And the boss here is Johnny. Will you show me around? I'd love to. You have to see how different things are here. Hasn't that changed in the last two years? Yes, it's been two years since the clashes. Hello? We redid the whole roof. There was nothing left. Here, I can visit the dormitories without any problem. When I arrived, the cells were for a maximum of four people. Okay. And how many are you now? Now it's overcrowded. There are eight of us, sometimes ten. Do you want to come in and see? Can we come in? Ask people if we can come in. He doesn't want to. He's with his visitor. Let him enjoy it. May we come in? Pleased to meet you. My name is Sebastian. What time do you have to enter the cells? The police call the roll at 9 p.m. and lock us in until the next day. And what time can you get out? The next day at 8 a.m. I'll show you where the guys went to attack the other wing. They've been there. Before, there was no wall, just a fence. After the riots, we asked the colonel at the time to close everything down because tensions were still very high. And so you built this wall. Look at the bullet attacks there. This is Mike, says the panther. He's Johnny's brother. He's been here for 17 years. A wild name for a multi-recidivist. Is this the seventh time you've been incarcerated? Yes, this is my seventh time. I was a bad person. I killed a lot of people. Did you kill people? I can't give names, but I killed 34 people, including one woman. In fact, Mike was only tried for two murders. When they caught me, they ran me over with a car. I left like that, hitting my head on the curb. This shot me with a gun. They cut open my lip and broke a tooth. I had killed three people. I've had a big blow here, from the butt of a rifle. I didn't dare look. I resisted, but fainted. Do you know how lucky you are to be alive? <laughs> yes, I'm lucky. I'm glad I've come a long way since then. Now, I can talk to people. Before, I didn't talk to anyone. I was an antisocial guy. I had nothing but enemies. Well, I'll see you out. Hello? 
gracias. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Señores. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. And be wise. I don't know why they applauded me. To thank me for coming to see them or for having the guts to set foot here. I did my time at Palmasola. I spent five days among some of Bolivia's biggest criminals. I know I haven't been told everything. I know I haven't seen everything. The ink on my stamp is gone, but what I remember will never fade. Today, Leonidas is still at the helm of PC4. Enix takes law classes to try and reduce his sentence even further. Rosita is still waiting for his release. The Panther is not about to leave the PC3. Anyway, out there, a lot of people want to do him in. Even overcrowded, Palmasola keeps welcoming prisoners and their families.